we still have two wars, but are bond yields finally stabilizing? And what about equities? Well, last week I said, and in fact, the bottom forming indicator is rising up here, the confidence level is rising, and the market's dropping. This, to me, looks like the markets could go lower before we see an end to this. How much lower? I don't know. And that's exactly what happened. I guess I'm going to have to start paying very close attention to those bottom dynamic indicators. There's still a lot of fear out there right now. Why? Because there are two wars going on in the world, and the Fed has raised interest rates 22 times from just about 0% to 5.5% in a very short time. With that being said, let's take a look at the health of the markets right now. The equity markets are still giving somewhat of a mixed signal, but treasuries are starting to show signs of a potential turnaround, and this will ultimately be good for equities. So if we take a look at the markets over the past week, you can see we had a start of a rally at the beginning of the week, and then things just <laughs> kind of went to hell in a handbasket. And you can see by the end of the week, we had a very unhealthy looking situation here with the riskier equities in ARC and in the NASDAQ 100 down the most. And if we look back over the past month, you can see we've had somewhat of an unhealthy situation, although the NASDAQ 100 is doing better than some of the other indices. So not totally terrible. And if we look at year to date, we still have a healthy rally going on, although you can see it's starting to collapse here. And then if we look back over the past five years, you can see we've had a very healthy rally with the exception of ARK Invest, which are still selling for a discount relative to where they were five years ago. I'm afraid to say how I... And how are the bottom dynamics looking? Well, if we take a look at the bottom dynamics, you can see we had somewhat of an attempt at a bottom forming indicator back here, but the confidence level wasn't quite high enough. So we didn't get a bottom forming indicator. What's interesting is we got pretty close to a bottom confirmation here, but the level was never high enough and the confidence wasn't high enough. Now where are we? Well, we had a bottom forming indication here and we have another one here with a very high confidence level. Now, does this mean this is the bottom? Not necessarily, this could continue lower, but I think there are some indications here that we might be at or near the bottom. I'm not re really ready to call this one. And how does this show up in risk versus opportunity? Well, you can see that risk acceleration, this yellow line, has just absolutely collapsed. I mean, this is a really, really low level here. While the risk, the red line, fell, but now is on the increase again. So kind of a mixed signal here. And then if we look at the opportunity, this fell but it's also starting to increase. So hopefully this is the one that's going to tell us what's happening going forward. I say hopefully because I don't know that it is. We're just gonna have to wait and see how next week plays out. Although, as I said earlier, there's some positive signs in the treasury markets that may point to a improving stock market. Don't let you down. And how about if we look at equity versus safety? So as you know, we always take a look at these and we're going to follow the NASDAQ 100 and then we'll take a look at cash. So if we look at the NASDAQ 100, it's been all over the place. You can see it was up here in first place. In fact, it was in first place the week before that. Then it fell to ninth, then seventh, then ninth, then up to fourth, then second, and now right back to ninth. Usually this kind of craziness, this kind of volatility happens at or near a bottom. Um, and you'll see that as we go through some of these other indications. Now, if we look at cash, cash has been fairly stable, meaning it's been up here in the top of the rankings, which is not good for the health of the equity markets. And if we look at small caps, very much like the NASDAQ 100, all over the place. You can see that here. And then if we look at the S&P 500, again, all over the place. And the Dow, the Dow consists of more stable stocks. So if you look at this, it's much less wonky than the NASDAQ or the small caps. You can see that, yeah, it's been wiggling around, but it's been staying pretty much in the middle of the rankings. Not terrible. And what if we look at safe assets? So we look at cash 
short-term treasuries and intermediate treasuries. You can see they've all been up here pretty much in the top half of this table, except right here and back here for over this entire duration. This is not speaking well to the health of the equity markets. And if we look at longer term bonds, you can see that they've been stuck down here in the bottom half. In fact, EDV, the longest duration bonds, are right down here at the bottom. So an unhealthy looking treasury market. But like I said, I'm going to show you in a little while why I say it looks like things could be turning around here. So how does all of this show up in the buying and selling pressure? Well, if you look at the buying and selling pressure, I mean, you can see every one of these indices has been falling, that's for sure. And you can see that the selling pressure for the Dow is above the buying pressure. Same for the S&P 500, same for the NASDAQ 100, and same for ARK Invest. Now, what I do like here is that for the NASDAQ, the selling pressure has been declining, and for ARK Invest, it has also been declining. What about small caps? Very similar picture. Again, you can see the drop in the index, and you can see that selling pressure peaked out here and is starting to fall off. So hopefully this trend continues and we start to see a turnaround here. And what about sector rankings? Well, if we look at sector rankings, I did this last week and it's kind of instructive. So I did it again this week, except I, instead of deleting one of these and, and adding this week, I just added this week. So now we've got five weeks here. You can see consumer staples moved up here, not good, and moved up again, not good. What about cash? Well, cash went from here up to here, down to here, and it's still here. So this looks fairly unhealthy. You can see consumer discretionary down here, along with technology, innovation, and ARC, and the NASDAQ 100. They're all down here at the bottom. This looks pretty unhealthy. And if we look at just last week and next week, to give you some context, you can see that not much has changed here. Uh, consumer staples moved up a notch. Bitcoin's still up here near the top. Uh, gold has come way down here. And consumer discretionary uh, is down here near the bottom. So again, with innovation and technology right at the bottom, this looks very unhealthy. But what if we take a look at sector rank acceleration? Remember, these tend to be a little more forward looking. Well, you can see where we were five weeks ago. Cash was right up here at number one. It declined a little bit. It declined more, it declined more, and it declined way down here. So this is looking like it might be indicating a turnaround in the health of the equity markets. Still too soon to tell, but this is encouraging. Now, what I don't like is that consumer discretionary has also been falling back here, but consumer staples have also been falling back. Uh, Bitcoin's right up here at the top, and you can see that the NASDAQ 100's down here. We've got ARK Innovation up here. So it's kind of spread out all over the place. And so if we just compare last week with this week, you can see where we're at. Cash was down here last week, and it's moved even further. This is good. Consumer staples moved down a bit, but so did consumer discretionary. So again, a very mixed picture here. Although I like the fact that the NASDAQ 100 moved up one tick. Not very far, but we'll take it. And semiconductors moved up a couple of ticks here. Not bad. Um, ARC Innovation kind of stayed put. So somewhat of a mixed picture, but I like the fact that cash is way down here. Hopefully this trend continues. And what if we look at treasuries? Well, treasuries actually look like they're trying to turn around here. For the week, they finished the week up with the riskiest treasuries, the longest ones, EDV, finishing up the most. This looks very healthy. This looks like a very healthy start to the week. What about over the last month? Over the last month, you can see we have an unhealthy situation. What about year to date? Well, year to date, you can see we're right down here near the bottom. And if we look back over the past five years, same picture. So these things have really gotten clobbered. And you know, my hope is that uh, we're kind of, we've kind of seen the worst of it here and maybe we'll start to see a turnaround. And how does all of this show up in the buying and selling pressure for treasuries? Well, this is where you start to see that things could be showing some signs of improvement. Now at the short end, at the short duration treasuries, you can see that they've, they've been rallying, but the selling pressure is above the buying pressure here, even though the price was moving up. 
But what's interesting is when you go to intermediate treasuries, which overall have been falling, except for very recently, you can see the buying pressure moving above the selling pressure. Same is true for seven to 10 year treasuries, buying pressure moving above the selling pressure and the price increasing. And then at the long end, 20 year treasuries, you can see the price has been increasing lately and the buying pressure again is moving above the selling pressure. So hopefully this is a sign that we've seen the worst of it for treasuries. And what about that inverted yield curve? Well, let's take a look. So if we look at how things look this month, the blue line, this, this blue line that starts out on top here and then ends below the red line, that's right now, that's as of Friday. And you can see that since a month ago, yields at the long end have gone up, causing the bonds to fall. But what I like here is that yields at the short end have started to drop. Now, if these trends continue, especially yields at the short end dropping, this will eventually become uninverted. Right now, we're 16 and a half basis points inverted, um, which isn't terrible, but it's got a ways to go before we uninvert. And what about the Fed meeting coming up next week, Wednesday? Well, right now, uh, the, the sentiment is 98% that the Fed will leave interest rates flat. What's interesting about this is that this is now pivoted and there's a 2% probability that they'll actually lower rates. It used to be that the, the vote was that there's a slight chance they'll raise rates. Well, right now, there's a slight chance that they'll actually lower rates. This is a good sign. And how does all of this look over time? Well, you can see we're 16 and a half basis points inverted. And you can see that way back here, we were over 1% inverted. And things have really been clawing back, especially recently. So we're heading in the right direction, still have a ways to go before the yield curve is not inverted. And what about gold? Now, with all the contagion and the war in in the Middle East, and we still have a war going on in Ukraine that nobody's talking about, gold has really pivoted and taken off up here. Now you can see that the buying pressure moved up here well above the selling pressure and has been staying here. So until this situation resolves itself, and who knows when that's gonna be, um, gold could be a good place to be. And what about Bitcoin? Well, Bitcoin has had just a really, really nice run here. And you can see the buying pressure has been wild. It went off the charts above the selling pressure. Now, after this kind of a run up and this kind of a huge increase in buying pressure, you would expect it to pull back here, which is exactly what it did. The price fell a little bit and the buying pressure collapsed down to here. But look, when I say it collapsed, it's still well above the selling pressure so still in a good place it'll be interesting to see how bitcoin does over the next coming weeks the market sold off again last week as the bottom dynamics indicated but long treasuries have started to rally the fed meets on wednesday next week and the expectation is they'll leave rates unchanged what they say though could cause the markets to rally stay the same or drop well, that was definitive. Until next week, I'm Calvin Rose, and thank you for watching Invest Smarter. That's all for now. So you want